we're a small company. Um, uh, been around for about three years, uh, working on some electric conversion solutions first, and now a lot of the uh, charging uh, systems. So we have DC charging systems, AC charging systems, variety of products. All right, so today um, I was asked to talk about some of our most recent charging systems. There's some here. Uh, some of you uh, had a chance to take a look. Some of you had a chance to actually participate in our uh, Kickstarter project uh, that we had in uh, um, last year, um, ended I think in uh, around August, and um, uh, this was it, right here. Okay, so we're uh, we're on. All right. So what we do is uh, driving adoption of EVs through um, open source technologies. And in this case, we, I'm going to talk about uh, just the charging technology. So what you see here is uh, one of our uh, juice boxes. Uh, so we call our charging station, level 2 charging station. It's also here. Uh, so it's really exciting to have this reel. This was a Kickstarter project uh, just a couple, few months ago. And now it's a real product with um, you know, everything basically designed uh, on uh, Kickstarter backers funds uh, now available. Um, the uh, uh, base version over there is in, in, in rectangular enclosure, um, is available pretty much now. The um, charger that you see here is uh, still a four week lead time uh, delay, but uh, it's pretty cool, right? So, do I, do I click, uh, click through or? Do I click through? Okay, okay, great. All right, so I, um, I talked about this. So, 500 units of this are already in operation, mostly in the United States. Um, so pretty good momentum, uh, given that we had it available only starting from uh, uh, from about August, uh, August September. Uh, the kit, um, which is a do-it-yourself, uh, basically you get a, all the components, maybe five, seven components. Uh, PCB is already assembled. The kit is about one hundred fifty dollars. You just add a cable and assemble it together. Um, the top of the line, what kind of what you see here, is about 700, which is 60 amp cables, LCD showing all the parameters. It's connected Wi-Fi, um, and you can set up time of day charging, energy metering, all that good stuff. You have little remotes that you can control uh, your unit with. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so remote monitoring and control can actually be done with just uh, just a hundred dollar forty nine kit, right? And this is a, um, we're, we're still working on the exact interfaces here, but okay, I'm doing something. Um, so this is how it, yeah, so this is how it looks on uh, our website if you have one of the Wi-Fi connected uh, uh, units, right? So you can see the charging of, uh, of your car here. So this is the energy in session. This is the energy over lifetime. And the right side, actually, if we, if we were able to see it, it would show how many dollars you saved by driving electric, right? Uh -huh given your uh, electricity rates and uh, gas rates in your area. And this is the uh, uh, sort of instantaneous power, right? So on this station, which is actually one of the stations at, uh, at my house, right? Uh, this is a RAV4 EV, and this is a Nissan LEAF, six kilowatts and about 10, 10 something, right? So uh, pretty, pretty good, uh, interesting thing. We're also working on the, um, on the full control, uh, API driven. Now, all of this is open source. Uh, the code base and all the designs, hardware, software, CAD are all available and uploaded on our site. So you can go and you can, you know, you can build it from parts if you want. Um, uh, also, the software that we're building for um, um, uh, for the uh, uh, control, the API, will also be available. We can click next. All right. So now, so this is the AC station, and I'm obviously here to answer any questions. So one of the more maybe exciting things is uh, the DC uh, charging, Chinema charging, that we also started working on, which was inspired by some uh, really cool people on uh, mynissanleaf.com, uh, Fred, Gary Gid, and uh, a couple of others. So he actually started it, and then we sort of jumped in, and they were looking for somebody to uh, figure out how to build the hardware around this, right? <coughs> so what we started doing, we basically took our one of our existing uh, smart charge DC chargers that um, you know, we, I think, have about 150, 200 of them out there already, mostly charging conversions, right? So over the last three years, we've got 200 of those charging other people's uh, cars, conversion cars. So we took that and we've uh, adapted it to charge Leaf, right? And some of you have seen, maybe have seen the videos. Um, on YouTube, we have a couple of videos showing our first charger. It's actually been 
maybe a couple of weeks back uh, when we posted those. That was our first successful charge. The hardware that you see here is actually the next gen after this. Um, this is a 20 kilowatt hardware. This is a uh, 12 kilowatt hardware there. So in YouTube videos, you see 12 kilowatt. We can do 20 now. In YouTube video, uh, the hardware is not isolated, right? So it's inherently more dangerous and all that. Uh, this is an isolated hardware. Uh, this is going to be the basis for the product, right? The, one of the biggest things that we had to deal with is the uh, uh, connection. Right, so how do we, where do we get the plug? And I actually talked to a few manufacturers and tried to figure out, you know, can I, can I get that um, in some way, shape, or form? Well, first of all, if you're just individual, they're not going to talk to you. Um, if you're a company with less than 100 units volume, they also not, don't want to talk to you that much, right? So our code for 100 units uh, of uh, the Chenimo connectors was about $2,200 a piece. Right? <laughs> So um, that's, that's pretty steep charge. And what we're trying to do here, again, this is all open source, right? So the idea here, the charger hardware and software is already open source. The uh, quick charge controller uh, codes that is working on the Arduino Dua, um, I don't know how many of you know what Arduino is, but this is open, open source hardware, basically platform millions and millions uh, uh, in use out there. So we have it working on, uh, one of these little boards um, that is uh, has a chip, um, just 84 megahertz, um, small small chip with CAM uh, controllers and all that. So we have some circuitry around it to connect it. This is a uh, 3D printed uh, Chinimo flat, right? And um, the total cost is probably about I don't know, maybe 100. $50 or something like that, mostly for material. The credit doesn't go to me or, or us, actually. There's a guy on the forum, uh, Joel Clements, uh, who uh, designed and produced uh, one of these. So now we're trying to figure out how to um, make it a little bit more scalable, right? So we can build more of those and actually you know, uh, sell this or offer this as a product. Uh, one of the things that we tried, the most difficult thing about it is building the power pins. So if you uh, uh, walk up after the presentation and take a look at what these pins are, these are actually uh, very manually created. So we've uh, uh, tried to figure out how to build them in, in, in more scale. Um, so Shapeways, for example, a 3D printing house, they actually have services, um, you know, 3D printing metal, right? And there are two, a couple of options there. So we figured, yeah, maybe we, we can try and print those things. And before that, we, for a couple of months, we tried to find compatible pins. Just, just can't, right? Uh, there are no part numbers, nothing. Um, so went there, um, uh, uploaded the design. The brass pins uh, were about $90 per piece. Uh, and then we kept looking through the, uh, through the available materials. And silver pins are just $20 more. So uh, just thought this would, be, this would be a little bit fun. So just got these. We're going to test, uh, test these out. Uh, to, so this is uh, sterling silver um, Chittimo paints, uh, right? And uh, actually, you can, print the whole, you can print these out of gold, and it still will be less expensive than the 2200 version. Uh, <laughs> so, but very good electrical conductivity, and uh, probably uh, pretty reliable as well. So what we're trying to do uh, with this is uh, make this available in a limited form, right, to people who know what they're doing um, uh, in about two, three months, right? Uh, and our general philosophy is open source and um, as low cost as possible. So basically, you know, we, uh, we don't charge much more than the, uh, what you would have to pay for the parts of um, the kit if you go and buy them in a volume of one, right? So, you know, we do need to make some money to support the R&D and all that, but we make them on basically volume pricing of the components and, and some extra, right? So, how much were those silver pins? Like $110 a piece. You could have that machine down at conference for lunch here. I'm sure. I bet you have that part. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. What we want to do, what we wanted to do with this is um, uh, make sure that you know we we uh, know the design, we uh, um, 
uh, the dimensions work and we can plug it in and it works, right? Once we have all of that done, right, it makes sense to hire somebody to actually build it, right? And the first two sets will be more expensive than silver, right? Because we have to pay somebody to machine it, we have to pay uh, the shop and all that, right? So that's kind of made sense as a, a beginning approach. This is very labor intensive too, right? You know, printing it out of color plastic, right? Okay, um, do I have anything else? Let's see. Um, yeah, right. So you guys, you guys have seen this. What I would be interested in hearing, uh, maybe after you know, you can walk up to me and, and talk to me. I want to be interested. In, like, should we, should we build it? Um, and uh, how should we launch it? Um, and how much you guys would pay for it? Right now. To give you an idea, this is all probably going to be about one third to one fifth of the cost of the uh, fast charging station today, um, but it's still going to be several thousand dollars, right? Um, so we were trying to get to a point when it makes sense as a as a residential device, right? So you can plug it in <coughs> your uh, in your house. It works off the um, uh, single phase, two forty. Um, and you know there probably will be a couple of versions because uh, the communication protocol is the same. We've got to figure it. We've got to figure it out. You know it will work. So we can plug it in with the 10 kilowatt. We can plug it in with 20 kilowatt, um, and the pricing will probably be uh, different as well, right? So we're interested in what you think we could get away with, basically, right? Yeah. Well, so how many amps at 240 would that take? Um, well, it's 20 kilowatts, which is this unit is about 85 amps. That's tough for a residence. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Actually, it doesn't <coughs> 85 amps. It doesn't exist. Uh, you cannot find the actual. Um, you cannot find a connector. Use. Oh, you can. You can find. A, you can find a breaker. You can find a 125 breaker and plug it in. Yeah. yeah. I have a breaker. Oh, okay. You mean the wall breaker? Yes. Yeah. 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 No, but you, you can't find you know you can't find the uh, residential NEMA plug that yeah. would support that, right? Most, I, most houses have two hundred. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. But, so and that was the point, right? So we, we, we thought about what power level would make sense, right? Um, and uh, you know it definitely doesn't make sense to go to fifty kilowatt in the residential setting, right? And ten kilowatt doesn't make sense because all of you guys have six point six in the car already, right? So it's kind of, yeah, you know, well, maybe, 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 okay, 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 I'll give you that. But it still makes a little bit less sense, right? So felt like 20 is about what you can get away with in uh, a typical residential, even 150 amp ser uh, service, right? And would be a good uh, step up. Yeah. Yeah, so. Right. It's hard wire, it doesn't bother you to spend that much money on your product. You don't need plugs. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, so the connection will, will be, I think, will be less of a problem. Um, so I, I'd love to hear what you what do you think, but after the, you know, <laughs> we have limited time, but it's cool stuff, you know, we're very excited. Right, thank you.